quite excited because I have travelled 12 hours to the middle of nowhere. I'm on the trail of a healer. Now this guy says that he sees up to 2,000 people a week and that he cures up to 60% of the people that go and see him. Now, his patients are people with quite serious things wrong with them, with cancers and very nasty skin conditions. And he says that he's curing them just using the bark of the trees around him and the leaves and flowers that he forages from the forest nearby his house. His name is Vajya Murti and he sounds absolutely extraordinary. It's taken me a whole day to get here, but I'm fascinated with alternative medicine, so nothing was going to stop me tracking this guy down. I'm in the Malnad region of India, in Karnataka, and I'm not the only one on a mission to meet this man. His reputation has spread far and wide, and people travel vast distances to see him. He's devoted his life's work to healing and treats everyone absolutely free. He is highly respected by all who know him, and according to local knowledge, is something of a miracle man. He's not an easy guy to find, and I eventually catch up with him and join him foraging in the forest, collecting ingredients for his next clinic. Vadia, what is this? Is this a healing bark? Can I have a look? You do medicine, sir. Medicine bark. Medicine. <gasps> and what would this be used for? Cancer. For cancer? Cancer, cancer. It's a cancer cure? Cancer. Tarot cancer. Is it? Uh, tarot cancer. And what do people drink it? Drink. Yeah. 24 hours, one time. One time? One time. 90 days. For 90, 90 days, days 90 every days. day. And it'll get rid of their throat cancer. Throat cancer. Wow. That's a good bit, yeah. How much of this do you need for your clinic? It's one day 50, 60 kilo. 60 kilo? Kilo. That sounds like a lot. we better get moving. Thyroid cancer. Thyroid. Thyroid. Thyroid cancer. Mm. So all these trees are, well, it's just like a great big medicine cabinet, isn't it? Really? Medicinal uh, area. Medicinal area, is area. it? Uh, blood cancer. Blood cancer. Blood Leukemia. Cancer. Leukemia. Yeah. Uh, this, and, and this, wow. Oh, look at the colour of that. And it's the colour of blood. It looks like blood. Red, like blood? Milk. Put it in milk? Milk. Milk only. Harvesting over and with a sack full of potential cures, we head back to Vajra Murti's house, where his twice-weekly clinic is due to open. I can honestly say I've never seen anything quite like it. The queue of patients waiting has to be at least a mile long. I feel very honoured when he invites me inside while he prepares for his patients. Vadia, how did you become a healer? Eight hundred years back. Your, your generations Generation. back have handed down to you. So was your dad a healer, your oh. father, oh. and your son? Your son will become a healer? Uh, His son is learning to become a healer. Oh. And, and does it take a very long time to learn to become a healer? 40 years. 40 years? Service. When somebody walks in to see you, 
and they say, I've got a pain. How, how do you examine them? Is it just visual examination? Small reports. Small reports. Mm. Yeah, so they usually bring a medical report with them no, medical. and you'll have a look and then you'll give them something based on the medical report. I see, I understand. Do people just come from India or do they come from all over the world? America or over there. Kuwait to Iran or over there. And any from England? Any England, do many England in the Nobanis on the Moon Alexander. Our address is a Pizagamara. What would you say to people who um, don't believe in this sort of medicine? Nambike is the liberal. Poor three gentry, Nambike is the birthday. Nambike is the liberal. Confidence. Full confidence, it can die, liver, sir. 90% confidence. Okay, good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Why would they come if they didn't believe in it? Yeah, no, that's a good, good answer. Just before the doors opened, I couldn't resist asking Vajir about my own ailments. Well, I'd have been crazy to let the opportunity pass. I've got, I think, this might be a bit of arthritis or... Uh, rheumatism. Rheumatism. Is that what it is? Yeah. Is there something for rheumatism? <laughs> and this is the rheumatic bark. Rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah. Rheumatoid arthritis. OK. I'd just like to briefly say to my doctor, Paul, at home, if this man can do something you can't, you're in big trouble. Take one piece of medicinal bark, two spit cumin seed, I've got that, two teaspoons of black pepper powder, I can make that. Uh, and pound them together, boil it well, strain it through a cloth. I can do that because I've got a jam bag I can use for that. And consume it daily three times, half glasses after breakfast, after lunch, after nine days. This will do me for nine, nine days. days. Nine days. Yeah, OK. Nine days. Yeah. These are each... Seven days. Oh, OK, I understand. Cool, brilliant. I'm going to do that. People started queuing at four o'clock this morning in the dark to see the healer. Many of them have bought medical records, x-rays, lab reports, blood test results. And they're queuing up in line, and then they'll go in, see the healer for about 10 seconds each. Hello, Maria. Some of them, having travelled a day, two days, three days, will then say thank you, touch his feet, and leave with a handful of bark. <laughs> I said to him, you know, do these things really, really cure people? And what he said to me was that a lot of the people that are coming here, he's actually their last resort. They've tried everything else. They've tried conventional medicines. They've been very ill. A lot of them know that they're near death. And he said, I give them this medicine, and 60% of the time it works and it makes them better. And the other percent of the time, I know what I give them is hope. And he said, and actually, that's more powerful than any medicine. So I think that's why there are up to a thousand people here today. It's not just to get the medicine, it's to get the huge amount of warmth and kindness and humanity and hope that he gives them. I just wanted to say thank you very much for the for I've had such a fantastic time with you. This is a very silly present. It's a musical tin of biscuits from London. <laughs> it's just a very silly thank you for a very special time. Thank you so much. Really, thank you. Thank you.